How to rebuild a vintage steam toy, part 3. Remachining the flywheel and getting the parts together for the new crankshaft and bearings. In this clip I have the flywheel in my forge or self-centering chuck which is fitted to the larger of my two lathes. And currently I'm reaming the hole in the centre of the flywheel. The original crankshaft was metric, but the new crankshaft will be 3 16 of an inch, which is slightly larger than the original one. And as you saw in episode 1, the original crankshaft is very badly bent, and therefore unserviceable. In this clip, if you look closely, you can see that the reamer, which is very small, is wandering about. And that's because the hole is not in the centre of this flywheel. And that's not a very good start. When I insert the 3 16 of an inch diameter shaft in the hole, and then rotate the flywheel, you can see that it's miles out. You can't see it very clearly from this clip, but at some time in the past, this flywheel has been bored out. And it's had a plug fitted, so I'm going to drill out the plug. First of all, with a drill size that is smaller than the plug, and then with a larger drill, which is almost the size of the plug. This flywheel has been bored out to 5 eighths of an inch, and by using a drill size just under 5 eighths of an inch, I'm going to drill out most of the material. This is steel, by the way, not cast iron. Oh, and look what's happened. Beginner's look. The drill has grabbed in the 5 8 plug, so I can just withdraw it. So now I'm going to test the accuracy of the hole using a dial test indicator, and it's really not bad. More than serviceable. So I'll leave the flywheel in the forge or chuck, and now on my small boxwood lathe, I've turned a piece of mild steel down to 5 8 of an inch external. On this piece of bar that I used, there was a big centre hole down the middle of it, so I'm machining this away. It was done with a large centre drill, that's why I'm having to remove so much of the bar at the end. At this point I'd just like to say that most of these lathe sequences are speeded up. And the reason for this, apart from making the video shorter, it's also to prevent any viewers from slipping into a coma while watching the video. According to the micrometer, the piece of bar is now exactly 5 eighths of an inch in diameter and it's time to part it off. Normally, when I part off pieces of steel bar like this, I would use a cutting lubricant but in this instance, I'm not using any cutting lubricant as I don't want to contaminate the surface of the metal so that when I use Loctite to hold the piece of bar into the flywheel, the bond will be good. Back to the Smart and Brown lathe and I'm using a large 5 eighths of an inch diameter reamer to clean out the hole in the flywheel. The lathe is running in back gear and I'm going very slowly with the reamer. It's always a good idea to ream slowly, that way you do not get an oversized hole. Also, if the lathe spindle speed is too high for reaming, particularly on cast iron, the part may chatter. And this chattering could also enlarge the hole in the centre of the flywheel, which I really don't want to happen. Time to apply the anaerobic adhesive. Loctite and this stuff, which I think is called True Lock, cure and hold the parts together when they're deprived of oxygen. And just in case you do not understand my Yorkshire accent, here is the dictionary definition on screen. In this clip I'm fitting the steel plug. I'm rotating it as you can see here to spread the adhesive on both surfaces thoroughly. Please note, when I use Loctite, I never machine the parts to a really tight fit. The fit of this piece of steel into the hole in the flywheel is what I would term a piston fit. I've found from experience that if I machine the parts to too close a tolerance, then apply the Loctite, as I fit part A to part B, all of the Loctite is pushed out and you do not get a good bond. Having said that, it's not an excuse for a rattle fit. I'll take this opportunity while the Loctite substitute is curing to enlarge the holes on the steel bracket that fits to the firebox part of the boiler and this is so I can fit some phosphor bronze crankshaft bearing bushes. And I'm drilling the bracket out to 9 30 seconds of an inch which will be fine to take some bearing bushes with a 3 16 hole down the centre. And I'm sorry that my hand got in the way, but I needed to lock this against a piece of wood in case the drill grabbed. You can see from this clip what I'm going to do. The crankshaft fits through the holes, and I'm going to machine a pair of phosphor bronze bushes, and these are going to be pressed into the holes. And I'm also going to use some Loctite to just make sure that they don't work loose. Now that the Loctite has firmly grabbed the piece of steel bar in the centre of the flywheel, it's time to machine it. First I'm using a substantial centre drill, followed by an imperial drill size, one size under 3 16 of an inch. 
even though the 5 eighths of an inch diameter piece of steel bar is too long and sticks out of the other side of the flywheel, I've drilled the undersize hole all the way through it, and now I'm using a reamer. I'm only reaming this hole to the thickness of the flywheel, not all the way through, because I don't want to risk breaking the reamer. The reason for leaving the centre part stuck out like this on the outside edge of the flywheel is so that I can fit it into the three-jaw chuck in the Boxford lathe and clean up the external dimensions of the flywheel. The flywheel is running fairly truly to start with, but I need to clean up the outer edge of the flywheel because there are some blowholes in the casting. I'm going to fill these blowholes using some JB Weld, but before I can do that I need a clean surface to work with. So with the lathe running at a slow speed in back gear, I remachine the flywheel. And when this job's finished, I can be fairly confident that the flywheel will run concentrically with the crankshaft. I'm taking very fine cuts at quite a slow speed, but for the purposes of the video I'm going to speed it up. It's always important to get the speed and feeds right when machining metal of a large diameter on the outer edge. In this clip I'm facing the front of the flywheel and then it's back to the Smart and Brown lathe and with the flywheel casting mounted in this I can machine away all of the excess metal on the steel plug that is firmly fitted in the centre of the flywheel. When I got right to the end of this job I also took a very fine finishing cut across the face of the cast iron part of the flywheel and that way the repair to the flywheel is invisible when it's painted. As quite a lot of viewers mentioned this is not the original flywheel for the engine and I'm well aware of that and one of the spokes is broken etc etc. The whole point of repairing this engine is because it is of sentimental value to the owner so all I'm doing is improving what I was given in the first place not building a new engine. And that's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.